and now 5.5 is about dividing. Uh, and this is a perfect transition into chapter 6, because this is exactly where chapter 6 is going to start, which is dividing polynomials. So, just to give you even a bigger idea, so chapter 5 is about putting polynomials together. Chapter 6 is about taking them apart, a.k.a. factoring them. So after you mash some stuff together, how could you factor it into a product of two things or more than two? And then chapter 7 is about how do you use that idea of factoring to then solve an equation. So if there's a multiple <coughs> sign, how do you actually solve that using the factor? Okay. And there's polynomial fractions in there too, which is just, that's just good fun. Okay. So, 5.5 is dividing polynomials. Uh, we are skipping the section that is the long division of polynomials, so we're only focusing on dividing polynomials by monomials. Okay. So really we're looking at two types of problems here. Okay, so type one is simplify something like uh, 35x squared y to the 6 over um, 14x y to the 4. Okay, so that's the first type of problem we're going to look at. And then type two is simplify. <clears throat> And something like uh, 35. something like that. So those are really the two types of problems we're going to talk about. I'm going to give you some shortcuts, which again I'll say avoid these shortcuts when possible. But really, first we'll look at this. Then we'll look at this type of problem, which you can split up. And this is where chapter 6 is going to start. Because the very first thing you do when you factor is you take out any common factor. And so 5x squared here in this problem is the biggest common factor that I can take out of every term. And so the beginning of chapter 6 will be find that biggest thing that these numbers have in common, which is 5. Find the number of x's they have in common, which is 2. And then divide it out of every single term. And so this is a nice transition. We go straight from here to tomorrow morning. We'll be in uh, 6.1, doing the same thing. All right. So first we got three shortcuts, which is just a big <coughs> mess of mistakes that are possible in here. So here are the three shortcuts. All right. The first one is if you have something to a power, and on the bottom you have that same base, but to a different power, you can subtract that. You could say that's b to the m minus n power. Okay, I'll give you a couple of y's here. Um, for all of these exponent rules, uh, b can't be zero. Right? For the very clear reason of the one thing we can't do in math is divide by zero. So when b is on the bottom, you can't you know, zero to a power divided by zero to a power. That doesn't work because you can't divide by zero. All right. So when we ask why is this true, right, it makes really intuitive sense. Let's think about it like 2 to the 5th power divided by 2 to the 3rd power. That's equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 2 times 2 times 2. So we can cancel <laughs> 3 of those 2's out, and what we're left with is the 5 2's minus the 3 we canceled out. And so we're left with 2 to the second. Okay, so that's why it is that subtraction is really saying, I'm canceling out n of them. And what's left over is this original amount minus the n that I canceled out. Okay. Another example would just be something like uh, x to the 8 over x squared. That would be x to the 8 minus 2, or x to the 6, not, common mistake, 
x to the 8 divided by 2, which is x to the 4. Okay, so just be careful of that. When you see an exponent and an exponent, we're subtracting. Because again, what you're really doing is you're saying I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's over 2 x's. And so I just cancel out one of them and two of them, and I'm left over with 6. Okay, so subtraction. All right, now the second rule is, whoops, number two, is b to the zero equals one. Again, <clears throat> b can't be zero. But other than that, anything to the zero power is equal to one. Okay, I'll give you two reasons why. <coughs> okay, well then we'll do some examples. Okay, I love people asking why, so let's pretend somebody did ask why. Why? Why, why? Oh, Wow, <laughs> great, okay, yeah. so yeah, so what if I have x to the 3 over x to the 3? What's that obviously equal to? Zero. One. One. No. one, yeah, it's anytime one. you divide anything by itself, it's 1. But we just figured out a shortcut, which is this is x to the 3 minus 3, which is x to the 0. So, 1 is x to 0. That's one way to think about it. Another way you could think about it is, is reason two. Is just think about the pattern, like two to the third power, two squared, two to the one, two to the zero, two to the negative one. So two to the two to the third is eight, two to the second is four, two to the first is two. So it would make sense that this is one, because think about it. Every time you raise this power by 1, you are multiplying by 2, you are multiplying by 2, so every time I take one of them away, I have 1 less 2, so what I'm doing is dividing by 2, I'm taking away one of those 2's that it was multiplied in there, so divide by 2, divide by 2, so you can see 2 to the 0 is 1. Um, you can even continue this pattern. We won't be dealing with negative exponents, but for sure in 263 you will. Later in the class they might come up a little, uh, but for the most part we won't come across these. But this would end up being 1 half. This would end up being 1 fourth. Okay, and the pattern continues. But the one you need to know is that anything to the zero power is equal to 1. Alright? Okay, um... I, we're going to do examples later, but I'll just mention, right, 3 to the 0 would be 1, um, negative 3 to the 0 would be negative 1, because only the 3 is getting raised to the 0, right, that same, it's, you know, just because remember, 3 squared is 9, negative 3 squared equals negative 9, because remember, the exponent only affects the number unless there's parentheses. You can even do the third example and do negative 3 in parentheses to the 0. That would be 1 again. But this negative isn't part of that exponent. Okay, so just remember that. Uh, that's that common mistake. Negative 3 squared is again positive. Number. So just, just be careful with what is being raised to the 0 power. And then the last shortcut. Again, so much room for error here. Is if you have any fraction and you raise it to the m power, as long as there is one term, this is equal to a to the m over b to the m. This only works with one term. All of our rules only work with one term. Okay. The y is pretty logical. If you have a over b to the m power, that's like saying I've got a over b times a over b times dot 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 times a over b n times, right? Well, if I multiply that fraction <coughs> over n times, when I multiply fractions, I just multiply all the tops, and I multiply all the bottoms. So really that's a times a times a times a dot 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 dot. And there's m of them. And on bottom it's b 
B times B times B times B times B, and there's M of them. So, obviously then, there's no addition or subtraction finds that make our life more difficult, so that's just A to the M over B to the M. So very straightforward Y, we're just multiplying this many fractions together. So there's this many A's and there's this many B's. Okay, no check. Um, so just below that, just one little reminder. It's a super common mistake, so I just keep bringing it up. Just remember, A plus B to a power is absolutely not A to the N plus B to the N. You can't distribute a power when there's more than one term. And similarly, A plus B over C to the n power is absolutely not a to the n plus b to the n over c to the n. Right? As soon as you have an addition sign or subtraction sign, absolutely we cannot distribute a power. That's when you have to multiply it out like FOIL. You write it twice, you do the multiplication, you do a you know, first one to everything, second one to everything, there's lots of terms, combined like terms. Mess. Who don't like it? Okay, so let's do a bunch of examples. Okay. The, um, all the ones at the beginning are pretty immediate. The first about 10 or 20 problems on the homework. There's about one step for each. So for example, number 2 is 3 to the 30 over 3 to the 10. I'll write up a bunch of problems before we start. 4 is x to the 8 over x to the 4. 8 is 3 to the 6 over 3 to the 3rd times 2 to the 8, 2 to the 4. 12 is 4 to the 0. And then, of course, we do all the other versions with negative signs. Um, 14 is negative 4 to the 0. 16 is negative 4 to the 0. And then we'll do some more after we talk about these. Okay, so these are the first ones. It's all pretty much one step. All right, so how will we do the first one? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 3 to the 30 minus 10. You don't divide the 3s and get 1. You're just saying I've got this many 3s, and I'm canceling out this many of them. So total, I've got 3 to the 20 left. Uh, you always do the top number minus the bottom number. Um, if, and this won't come up in this class, just off to the side, if you had 3 to the 2 over 3 to the 5, you would still do top minus bottom, and you would get 3 to the negative third. The reason is, again, this isn't in this class, you don't need to write this down. 3 to the negative third mean one, means 1 over 3 to the third, which means the leftover 3s were actually on bottom. When you raise something to a negative exponent, it actually means divide by. Or the way I think about it is somebody saying, hey, I'm on the wrong side of the division bar. I think the negative sign is a little like guy holding the flag. And so as soon as you put him on the other side, the flag goes down. And he's on the right side. So that's something that will come up in a later class. So pretty right. much you're just flipping it, right? That's what they positive. Yes, but you got to be careful with that because, and again, this doesn't come up in this class, but if it were something like this, you only move the x to the negative 2. So then x to the negative 2 is saying I'm on the wrong side. So, the so you would move that down here, and it would be 3 over x squared y. But the 3 and the y stay in the same place. So just wanted to mention that, but again, not in this, not in this course. Everything we do um, is left over on top, with the exception of numbers. Okay. But yeah, number 4, what do we do? Minus <laughs> 4 is 4. Yeah, so be careful that we don't do 8 divided by 4 is 2. It's subtraction. So you had 8, you canceled 4 out. So it would be x to the 4. Right? Just common misconception is not x to the 8 divided by 4 is x is 2. Okay? Yeah, this one, so we're getting used to the idea that this would be the same thing as 3 to the 6 over 3 to the 3rd times. 
2 to the 8 over 2 to the 4. So, I mean, you can deal with anything on the top canceling out with anything on the bottom as long as it's one big chunk of multiplication and division. So, you can cancel these separately and these separately. Right? And that's what we're going to be doing as we move forward. So, we'll be doing the third times yeah. 2 to the 4. Exactly. So, 3 to the third <coughs> times 2. Perfect. Okay, now the immediate ones. 4 to the 0 is? 1. one. Negative 4 in parentheses to 0 is? 1. And negative 4 to the 0 is? Yeah, principally say it. Negative 1. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, again, without parentheses, this 0 only applies to the 4. Just the way I would, would remember it is it's just like 9, whoops, let's just say 5 minus 2 squared. Most people could do that right. That's 5 minus 4. Same thing if you cover up the 5. Negative 2 squared is still minus 4 because that negative sign isn't part of the exponent. Okay, so same thing here. All right, so now... Same problem is a little trickier, so I'm going to write them on the board. I want you guys to write them down, and then I'm going to have people come up and solve them. Those are the basics. It doesn't get too much crazier than that for these problems. All right, so let's look at 18 is 200 wider than zero. Um, 20 is... 200y in parentheses to the 0. 22 is negative 6 to the 0, plus in parentheses negative 6 to the 0. 24, I'll put it a little lower just to be separate. 24 is, ooh, square roots, you haven't done those. Uh, okay. And then two more. This will be the hardest one. Perfect. This is good. So nice seven problems. I'll let you guys um, come up and do the no rush. And take your time to do them well. sampling of what you're going to see. And no pressure, no one's going to judge you.
You guys did super well. Okay. So starting out the first one, this is I maybe the only one that's wrong. Okay, this is a um, good start. So something to the zero power is one, but what's being raised to the zero power here? Four. Just the y. <coughs> so what should this be? 200. 200 times Four. one, or yeah, just 200, right? If there was parentheses, 200y to the 0, then it would be 1, right? If it was 200 to the 0 times y, it'd be 1 times y or y, right? So it just depends on what's being raised to that 0 power. In this case, the 0 power only applied to the y, so the y to the 0 becomes 1, but the 200 stays. Okay. This one, since it was the parentheses, to the zero power, it's equal to y. Right. This one, it's the six to the zero power, so that becomes one negative state, plus whole thing to the zero becomes one, so negative one plus one, zero. Okay. This one, just to show an extra step or two, this is negative square root of three to the zero is one, minus whole parentheses to the zero is one. So square root of 1 is 1. So that's negative 1 plus negative 1, or negative 2. Right. This one, because it's only one term, you can distribute in the I mean distribute in the exponent. So it's x squared over pi squared. You could write it like this or like this. Either one's totally okay. Right. This one, again, because it's one term, we could distribute it in. I'll show one extra step and say this is x squared to the third over 3 to the third, which then, yeah, x squared to the third, the shortcut is you would multiply. If you didn't want to multiply and you wanted to figure it out, you go, okay, x squared, x squared, x squared, there's three of them, that's 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, so there's 6 total. So you can always expand it out when the numbers are small. Okay? So this is totally right, but then we shouldn't get crazy, right? <laughs> So 3 to the 3rd would be 27. If you wanted to write it as x to the 6 divided by 27, that's awesome. But definitely don't try and combine numbers and x's at all. Numbers that are on the bottom stay on bottom, and numbers and x's can't combine. I mean, you can multiply them. Like 5 times x is 5x, but you can't actually blend them in any way. <coughs> right? And then this one was so close. The common mistake here is People forget that when you distribute this into all of this, that the number gets repeated too, because this is negative 2a to the 8th times negative 2a to the 8th times negative 2a to the 8th, dot, 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 dot. So people forget this, and a lot of people leave that as a negative 2. So this was great. Everything was right. The only small arithmetic was 5 times 8 is 40, not 45. Other than that, this is perfect. Yeah, but I would say really common mistake is people forget the number. For example, I might give a problem like 2x squared to the third power, and a lot of people would mistakenly, also it's not, 
but a lot of people would mistakenly say it's 2x to the 6, and they would only worry about the variable. But this would be, <coughs> correctly, it would be 8x to the 6, because it would be 2x squared times 2x squared times 2x squared, so 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That was good. You guys did really well for a first attempt. All right. Well, that's most of this section. Um, the only other thing we're going to talk about is kind of uh, what you can and can't do with splitting out the fraction. Yeah? So anything in a set of parentheses to the zero power of one? Yeah, anything, anything. except for zero. Yeah. yeah. But anything, letters, numbers, addition, subtraction, parentheses to zero power is, uh, is one, unless it's zero. The whole interesting in, in math is like, or in math, there's calculus specifically, is these impossible situations like zero to zero, um, which is impossible. You can't, it's not defined. The reason is, is I mean, zero times anything is zero, yet anything to the zero is one. So this would kind of be a paradoxical situation. So what we talk about in math is like, what's x to the x power, and then we look at as x gets really close to zero. So we like on a calculator, we could look at what if it's 0.1, then 0.01, then 0.0001, then 0.0001, and see like what we get, and that's kind of a big part of the study of calculus, is this idea of a limit. As you go really, really, really close, what happens here, and we get graphs, and then that's the whole study of derivatives, and that's everything. So really interesting to talk about these impossible situations, but you can't actually plug it in. So since you're not going to teach us to do the, to the negative variable? Yeah, yeah. Like, so pretty much we can always expect the top barrel to be larger than the bottom one? Yeah, so what, what you might get though is you might get something like uh, 32 over um, 20 x to the fifth x squared, where the variables will cancel out, but you might get numbers left over on the bottom. So when you reduce this, and this is, will be like our next problem, you could reduce this like any old fraction and say, hey, four goes into both of those, so this is eight and five. But these you could do, um, so let's see, eight and three, and then on top you can say x to the five minus two. So this is eight x to the third over three. So you could be left over with numbers on the bottom, but yeah, we're not gonna deal with x's left over on the bottom, or y's, or variables left over on the bottom. Um, but for sure, it's like reducing a fraction. It can stay as a fraction, so there might be numbers left on the bottom. Yeah. But the, the exponent on top will always be either greater than or could be equal to. All right, so that's what we're talking about next. Reducing slash simplifying fractions. There's not much for me to tell you, it's more just doing it. So here's problem 38, just like that one we just did. Uh, 45 x to the 12th over 15 x to the 4th. Okay, so really this is the same as 45 over 15 times x to the 12th over x to the 4th. So that's one way to think about it. Okay. As long as it's one term, and again, one term on top, and one term on bottom. You can cancel anything on top of anything on bottom. I split it up and deal with numbers separately, like any normal fraction. And again, you won't have any variables left over on bottom, which is nice. 
Okay, so this one, we reduce 45 over 15. You can do it in steps, like say five goes into both and get nine and three. Then divide them by three and get one and three. Then we can reduce this one, and what we get is three over one times x to the 12 minus four, or three x to the eight. And again, you might get some numbers left over on bottom. Okay. So that one's pretty normal. Just do an example or something with uh, two with you, and then bring up the last piece of information. Okay, here's. We'll do two problems. Okay, here's um, forty. <coughs> Is 44, 9 wide of the 19th over 7 wide of the 11th. And then here is, just to get absolutely bonkers, here's 52, which is negative 8, x to the 12th, y to the 10th, z to the 4th over 40, x squared, y to the 3rd, z squared. Okay, just that's as absolutely bonkers as they can give it to So the first one, what would we get? Or what would we do? Right, I would kind of split this as nine sevenths times this. I mean, that's how I would think of it personally. So what would we get? Perfect, that's it. The 9 sevenths you can't reduce. And then you just subtract. So 9 sevenths y to the 8, or 9 y to the 8 over whoops, 7. <coughs> These are exactly equivalent. Um, it's up to you whether you want to pull the coefficients out front or leave it as one big fraction. Totally the same. Okay. <clears throat> the next one, again, since it's one term, I could think about splitting it up like this. So here's highlighting a common mistake. Negative 8 over 40 is equal to what? Negative 1 fifth. Yeah, negative 1 fifth, not negative 5. Really common mistake. I mean, I saw that a ton on test number 1. People doing like 2 divided by 8. And instead of getting one fourth, just getting four. Okay, so be careful. When you simplify, you are left over with a five. But that five is on bottom, right? One fifth and five are very different. I was thinking in my head, like, man, I would rather have, you know, five hundred dollars than a fifth of a hundred dollars. I would rather have five houses than a fifth of a house. So I mean it's a huge difference. So that's a really common mistake. So let's simplify this. So negative eight over 40 becomes negative 1 over 5 times, what's this one? X to, X to the 10th times. Y to the 7th. Yeah, times. Z to the 2. Yeah. Z squared. That's it. And again, it's because we subtracted X to the 12 minus 2. Y to the 10 minus 3. Z to the 4 minus 2. And so overall we get negative 1 fifth X 10 Y 7 Z squared. Or you could write it as whoops, <clears throat> negative all those variables on top, all over 5. Doesn't matter which way you write it. Both are 100% equivalent, equal. OK, so the last one piece of information is what if there's more than one term? If there's more than one term, in one situation, you can absolutely deal with it. In the other, you can't. Okay, so more than one term on top, x plus 3 over 5, or on bottom, uh, 5 over x plus 3. Which of these can we split up? No, we can split one of them up. Oh, the plus, the x and the plus. Which one? I mean, they're both the x plus. Oh, no, it's not. Well, the numbers, not the variable. 
Yeah, when it's on top, this one is the x over 5 plus 3 over 5. We can split this up. The reason why is pretty straightforward. Think of it like the example of what's 1 fifth plus 2 fifths? Right? Yeah, no trick. That's equal to you can add the tops. 3 fifths, right? Well, there it is. Right? Just adding common denominator <coughs> fractions, that's splitting this up. Right? So you can add two things and combine them on top. Same, if you divide 5 into 1 plus 2, that's the same thing as dividing 5 into 1 plus 5 into 2. Okay? Um, I don't want to go too deep into the why on this one just because it involves some order of operations. I don't think it would add to the discussion here, just focusing on flipping its multiplication, distributing it why you can't do it. But this one, really important is remember, you cannot split this up. Okay? This is absolutely not equal to 5 over x plus 5 over 3. Okay, simple, quick example is let's look at, um, you know, yeah, let's look at 8 over 1 plus 1. That should be 8 over 2 is 4. If we were to split this up, we'd get 8 over 1 plus 8 over 1 is 8 plus 8 is 16. Not the same, right? So it's just, just a quick example. You cannot split it up when it's on the bottom. You can split it up on top. And that's going to be really helpful, as I said, tomorrow morning when we start Chapter 6. The first thing you do when you factor any problem, which for the entire rest of the class, we're going to be basically focusing on factoring polynomials. That's why we deal with polynomials. That's how we solve them. That's how we graph them. That's how we talk about solutions and intercepts. And the first step in factoring every single problem for the rest of the class is taking out a common factor. And we're going to be using this. So it'll look like a problem like this. 56. We will see a problem like 24x to the 4th minus 8x to the 3rd, and we will say what do they have in common. And this will be tomorrow morning, so it's a good time to introduce it. Yeah, you would take out 8x to the 3. In this case, they only have us dividing 8x as practice, but tomorrow you would be saying what do they have in common. 24 and 8 both have an 8 in them. I could take out 8. That's the biggest number I could divide into both. And then how many x's could I divide into both? Three. And so you would factor out that greatest common factor. Today we're just practicing doing it though. Okay, so they set this up for us. So the very first thing we would do is say, okay, that's the same as writing it like, oops, minus, writing it like this. And then we just do it like the problems at the beginning of the section. 24 divided by 8 is 3. x to the 4th minus one of those x's is x to the third, and then minus 8 divided by 8 is 1, x to the third minus one of them, we've got x squared. And you don't need the one there, obviously. Okay, let's do another one just like that. Um, and just to, just to highlight, I mean, you guys have already done this, so just remember, if you had 2y equals 4x minus 16, and I said, okay, divide both sides by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, how did you divide this side by 2? 4x divided by 2 minus 16. Exactly. So you already split this up to say this is 4x divided by 2 minus 16 divided by 2. So you already know dividing this whole side by 2 is the same as dividing each term by 2. So that's what we're doing over here. It's dividing an entire <laughs> polynomial by one thing, one term, is the same as dividing every term by that one term. Okay, so let's do a last example. That last example, or maybe two examples. Let's do two last examples. I guess it couldn't be two last, but two more. So here's kind of the culmination of this section. We got 62, 18x to the fifth, plus 24x to the fourth, plus 12x to the third. And we're taking out the biggest common factor here, 
set close. That would be x to the third. But we're taking out a big common factor. And 72, 49 x to the seventh, 28 x to the fifth, 7 x to the fourth, all over 7 x to the third. So again, it will go into every term even. So the very first thing I do is split this up and divide every term by 6x squared. Then I deal with the numbers separately, and I deal with the variables separately. Yeah. So is that 6x squared is the, you said the common denominator? Yeah, exactly. Because if I was adding all, well, tomorrow we'll be calling it the greatest common factor, because we're going to start factoring. Okay. But right now, it's the common denominator. I mean, think about this as this many 6x squared, this many 6x squared, this many 6x squared, add them together. And you would add all the tops oh, okay. and keep that denominator. So, like on this chapter, you would have to figure out what it is first? No, it just sets up the problem for you and says divide. Oh, okay. 6.1 will start figuring out common oh, okay. factors. Yeah, and that's going to be the first thing. What is the common factor? And then the problems after that will say, now divide by the common factor. Okay. All right, so dividing this, 18 divided by 6 is 3. Three x to the third. Three x to the third. Keep it going. Four x squared. Yeah. Two x. Exactly. All right. Same thing over here. I split this up. That minus sign stays minus. I just write this common denominator under all of them. And so what do I got? Seven x to the fourth. Yeah. Negative four x to the uh, two. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, X, negative X. Yeah, minus X, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's where all Ember did. So you got 15 to 20 minutes to practice those problems. <laughs> um, I will try 